is what we will be talking about. The Dryden Aqua Integrated System, a biological approach to pool water treatment. Yeah. Huh? Not chemical, biological. Exactly. Okay, we will talk in detail about APF, our product, but also, you know, in general about coagulation, flocculation, we will go very deep in this. And then, last but not least, we have ACO, the best stabilizer for outdoor swimming pools. We call it as well a game changer, the yep. junior game the changer. Junior game the master changer. game changer yep. is AFMNG. Exactly. And last but not least, you know, uh, how to control uh, the bacteria growth and algae uh, by removing phosphates. Yeah, in okay. a natural way as well. Great. And then we all, as always, we take your questions uh, through the chat function that you find in, uh, in your Zoom. Please use this to type up your questions that we will answer at the end of the session. As always, you, we will record this session. You will find it on our website for a total of seven days. Then it will be replaced with the next one. And also on our website, you find the program uh, of this series as well as the PDF uh, copy for you to print. Do you said the same shit uh, every, every time? Every day, good. Okay. Good. good. Excellent. Biological approach, DAISY, Dried Narco Integrated uh, System. And it's really the, 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 the elevated speech, if you want, is prevent rather, rather than, than kill. kill. And okay. how do we do this, Philip? So we do this in three simple steps, right? Good. Step number this. one is the filtration with AFMNG. AFMNG, 100% bioresistance, removes the breeding ground for bacteria to grow. Yeah. Cannot grow? Done. Done. Step and number two. Step number two, really what we will uh, talk today in detail, you know, to remove all the organics, all the nutrients, all the phosphates from the water because, and this is the red line that you see, no food, no growth. Exactly. Not complicated. No, not complicated Very logic. at all. And step number three is to protect chlorine from photooxidation by the sun and ampli amplify the natural UV light uh, for the disinfection power. So again, we are working here with, with uh, what, what nature gives us, the sun. Exactly. It's a very strong UV and yep. we make it work even better. Yep. yep. Good. Okay. So the results of the DAISY system are best filtration down to 0.1 micron, a massive reduction in oxidation demand in the water and subsequently a massive reduction in uh, chemical consumption, mostly also in the reduction of disinfection byproducts. Yes, less chlorine, less disinfection byproducts. Again, very yes. complicated. And we get with this, you know, really safe, clear water, best air quality and low consumption of, of these chemicals. Okay. All right. Let's jump in. Huh? Let's jump in. Uh, uh, we discussed this uh, last time, session number one, bioresistance is really important. Uh, and uh, this is really our AFM and G yep. bioresistance, the NG filters down to yep. one micron with its hydrophobic surface. You find this on our YouTube channel in this uh, really well done movie from our friend Florent. Yep. That we will see later on in the ACO yes. session. Okay. This we covered in session number five. Yeah. We will now move on to our step number two. Exactly. Right? Which is APF. APF, a coagulant and flocculant um, that we use together with What's, the CPF. What stands APF for? Okay. So APF stands for all polyfloc. All polyfloc. Huh? Really good. It's really, it's really, it stands for, it's a multi-spectrum coagulant and flocculant. Good. Huh? Who, who, who uh, got this name? Mm. It was Howard. It was Howard. It okay. was Howard. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I thought it was him. But no, no, <laughs> no, it was Howard. <laughs> for one time. Fishing for me. compliments. Yeah, no. sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, if you're talking, you know, uh, why, why daisy, you know, why flocculation? Because AFM is really good, you know, filter down to one micron, uh, but uh, daisy is a much better because it filters down to 0 0.1 micron. And that's a, a factor of... Yep. Uh, well, you know, I guess for a for a, a math guy, it's a factor of ten. But I'm, you know, me, I'm a little bit of a marketing guy, so it's at least a hundred times better. Okay, well, yeah. So I, okay. I say with mathematics, <laughs> factor ten works good enough for yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, let's come and, and uh, first explain, you know, uh, flocculation because it's not just flocculation; it's yeah, coagulation yeah, and flocculation. Yeah. It's not exactly the yeah. same thing. You want to take it, or yeah. I do it? Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's important to understand the Dr. difference. Meyer. So, so what is coagulation? Coagulation 
is the process of pulling dissolved substances out of solution into what's called colloids, very small particles, right? Um, you need this because you there's no other way to mechanically filter out uh, solution, uh, uh, substances that are in solution. The second step is what follows next. That's the process of flocculation. This is where you bring these colloids, these coagulated particles, uh, together in a larger flock, right? Yeah. That and this is, can then be filtered out mechanically. And that's really well explained or animated again by, by Florent. Here you see, you know, these are the soft substances. For example, phosphates, you know, they are negatively charged. <coughs> they uh, reject each other. And this is why they are in solution. Now you add a uh, positive charged uh, a coagulant, uh, an electrolyte, in this case, no false, you know, which you uh, uh, neutralize the charge, you destabilize this, and that brings them together. So you, you make this, this, this very small particles, these colloids, as uh, uh, Philip called it, and then you come with your flocculation, and flocculation, these are long chain molecules, and they go through and really form these small particles to a big flock, which is easy to remove. Now, Philip, I think the, you know, the reaction times is different. Yes, yes. So and that's a very important point. You know, the first step, the coagulation needs a very turbulent environment. It needs strong mixing uh, for the coagulants to, to work. The flocculation, the second part, should, uh, should take place in a very gentle environment so you don't break up the flocks. Yeah. And uh, you know, coagulation that that works within seconds with this aggressive mixing, and as Philip said, you know, uh, flocculation needs time. The longer, the better. Mm -hmm. So if you can have two, three, four minutes, that's good. If you would have fifteen minutes, like we have it in water treatment, yep. that's even better. Yep, exactly. And uh, by the way, this is uh, this is something also that you will see with with no force. You know, no force is one of these uh, coagulants uh, that we will maybe be explaining a little bit later on with no force. You know, this coagulation reaction. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Our APF is, uh, as Philip already said, it's really a multi-spectrum. I mean, this is single spectrum and this is multi-spectrum, uh, coagulant and flocculant. We have five important ingredients in it. There are three coagulants and two flocculants. Why, why uh, two and three? You know, to make it multi-spectrum. Mm. And, uh, oh yeah, that's another one here in this small video that you see up here. So just concentrate on the video. This is well explained, you know, what flocculation is. Now you have here this uh, polyelectrolyte. This is the flocculant. And this is what you dose in a, in a turbid uh, uh, solution. And then you see, you know, like this goes through like a fishing net and uh, removes these uh, particles. And you see that cloudy water gets clear. And you also have seen it's gentle. Or uh, in another way, you know, you see it down here. You have here, again, this uh, turbid solution. I guess that that's algae. You add the flocculant. You, you mix it but gently. And then you let it uh, sink. And then you get uh, a very clean uh, solution. Yeah. Yep, which you can then easily filter out. Yeah, exactly. So as you said, uh, three three coagulants, two flocculants, multi-spectrum really covers uh, covers the whole range, um, and very important. Uh, you know, because it's, people not always understand the difference, but very important that our APF can remove substances that are in solution because it also acts as a coagulant and it's not just a flocculant. Yeah. Huh? And the next one, you know, you can make really a fortune in producing or especially in selling uh, uh, flocculation, you know, because it really depends, you know, what you put in, you mm -hmm. know, some, some of the products we have seen, this was water with a little bit of, of salt in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, and believe me, Philip and me, we would love to do the same. 
Uh, mm -hmm. We love high, high margins, but uh, Howard disagreed in this and he made really the best and the most concentrated. And we have two products, APF pools and APF water treatment. Yeah. What's the difference? Well, the, the difference is the concentration in the flocculants, right? So the, the amount of coagulants is the same, but uh, the water treatment has a double concentration of flocculants. Yeah. Uh, we used to call APF pools, APF private pools, and APF uh, water treatment, we, we call to, to call APF public pools. So APF water treatment, you very good can use in public pools. When you have a filter bed of 1.2 meter, not too uh, fast uh, filtration velocity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you use the APF uh, water treatment, you know, in, in smaller bath filters, maybe a, bit, a little bit higher speed, then it will break through. It's, it's just too concentrated, yeah, yeah. just too concentrated. Yeah. So again, APF pools will work perfectly in private as well as in public pools, but really the very best, if you have thin filters, that would be really the yeah. APF water treatment. Yeah. And uh, because, yeah. Transfer is always the same. Uh, price difference is roughly 10% higher. That's what we would recommend. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, what the, what's coming up next is very important. You know, uh, for, for good or proper coagulation and flocculation, you need, you need to have a, P, a neutral pH. Around right? neutral. Yeah, around neutral and an alkalinity uh, that is higher than 40 ppm. Yeah, and right. we show you, you this. And this is not for our APF, this is for each and yes. every yes. Uh, product that we use in pool. Alkalinity is important. Oh, you zoom us more in. <laughs> nice. Uh, alkalinity you need, you know, if you have no alkalinity, you have a very unstable pH, and this is why you should need 40 ppm minimum that it would be uh, 50, 60 ppm. Mm. Um, but let's quickly talk about uh, the pH and the importance of pH. First of all, okay, the pH tells us if you're neutral, it's neutral. If we are in a low pH, like less than seven, it's acidic. And if it's higher, it's alkaline. You all know this. But what's really the pH? You know, it's really the, the negative logarithmus of the a concentration of the uh, hydrogen ions, of the H plus ions. And this is what you see here. You know, if you have a pH of zero, you have a concentration of one mole per liter of hydrogen ions. And you have a very, very, very low, I even can't say it, it's 10 minus 14 concentration of uh, hydroxide ions, OH uh, ions, right? Mm -hmm. If you go then higher in pH, let's say to neutral, you have a concentration of hydrogen ions, which is seven times less. It's 0 0.00, uh, six, six zeros, and then uh, one, uh, then one. And this is, how do you spell this? It's 10 to the power of minus seven. Okay, that's complicated. And the same amount you have on the OH minus ions. And you see, you have the same amounts, minus and plus, and this is why this makes it neutral. So the concentration from pH seven to pH six, it's, it's six times, it's 10 times higher, uh, the H plus concentration than you have it uh, here. I think it's just interesting to know. And in, instead of saying you have a pH of 10 to the power of minus seven. Yeah, you got you know, it. They, they, yeah, you, 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 you it. teach me. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's easy to say we have a pH of seven. But it's really the concentration of the yeah. H plus ions and of the OH minus ions, but we are just concentrating on the H plus ions. Mm -hmm. And that brings you to the point, you know, here you see at the pH of seven, uh, the concentration of the H plus and the OH minus ions exactly the same and that is why it's neutral if you go up in the if you go down in the ph you have more h plus ions than you have oh minus ions and this is why you get here in a positive theta potential and the other way around exactly huh? and remember the theta potential is the charge between particles basically yeah huh? in yeah. simple words so, in simple words yeah. it's a bit more complicated but that works perfectly charge between the particles. So if you reduce this charge, then things are yep. coming together. Exactly. If you have charge, people are not, uh, uh, particles are not coming together. By the way, in session number seven, we also will talk about 
influence of pH, redox potential, and secret potential. Yep. But it's not that important. So let's talk about the CETA potential and what we can learn from our grandmothers. Maybe <laughs> in your age, not, but in my age, you know, I still had a grandmother uh, where you did not go out and, and uh, she was grown up on a farm, you know, and they had cows and they milked it and they did butter. And how did they do it? Very simple. That's for the young generation that will be very understandable. Uh, not understandable. You, you, Take milk, and you sh and this milk is is uh, th there are these these droplets, and they have uh, they are negatively charged particles, and they they uh, re reject repels, repels, repels each, each other, each other yeah. and this is why they are in solution. Now, in if suspension. you in yeah. suspension, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, and this is if you I do it again. If you shake with a shaker this milk long, you remove these electrons from these particles. Mm -hmm. So you're neutralizing. And if you do it long enough, mm -hmm. you end up with butter and buttermilk. Yep. Just by changing the seed to potential. So it's a it's a mechanical it's a mechanical way of changing the charge between these yep. particles by shaking. It's a mechanical it. coagulation, yeah. coagulation. Yeah. Yeah, you want to take the next? Yes. So, um, you know, if we now take this example with the milk yeah. to back to our pool world, then we have a CPM which does the exact same thing. Uh, it, this boom. Yeah, exactly. So it it mixes the water, it agitates the water. This changes the charge between the particles that come through the CPM and they start to attract each other rather than to repel each other. And this is how um, this mechanical coagulation works. It also provides one, perfect one, let mixing. Me add, let, let me add one yeah. thing. Okay. So as, as you said, you know, uh, uh, we, we do like we did with the milk, we do it with the CPM. Okay, the CPM is one pass, very small, you know. If you really would do, do, want to do it uh, in this way, purely, uh, purely, if you want, want to, to create butter, do we need a lot of sure. a, a lot of um, uh, CPMs? But really important, this CPM you should put on the ground on, or on the earth. How do you mm -hmm. call it? In ground it. Ground it. Yeah. So this has to that the electrons can, that you remove can flow out mm -hmm. of the system. That's really important. So this is what we have seen, you know, the CPM is a, is a mechanical coagulation, flocculation. And then we also have a chemical with a, our APF. And the best is if you, if you bring these two together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's now your, your other point here, yep. the perfect yep. mixing. Exactly. So, so as we said earlier, the coagulation needs a very turbulent, aggressive mixing. And that's exactly what the CPM does with APF. Yeah, and it can't be more more aggressive than with a CPM, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And you know, finally, you know, and that is really especially for 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 public pools. I think it's a very small investment, and uh, uh, there is no maintenance, and and the effect is really big. The effect is really yeah. big. So, by the way, here you see this mixing, you know, uh, this is uh, the inside of a CPM and you see this turbulence, this cavitation uh, reaction. So you really, you split the water uh, quite heavily. We will talk in session number nine, then also where you can use CPM after the filter. This is to destroy bacteria flux after the filter. But uh, let's not uh, yep. go deeper in this. I think the next point, Philip mentioned it, the best point is that you use the CPM and you dose the APF in this. But there is another one. You know, very often you come to, to installation and they have uh, pumps and usually, you know, the bigger, the more expensive, not with dosing pumps. Uh, in dosing pumps, you know, dosing pumps who can uh, dose a very small amount, like our standard pumps, three to 160 milliliter, or we have also one tube which goes a little bit higher. But to dose these small quantities, like 10 milliliter or 5 milliliter, they are more uh, more expensive mm -hmm. than the, the big pumps, you know, which make two liter or three liter. And a lot of smart people then say, okay, I dose for one minute and then I stop. And this is completely wrong. wrong yeah. yep. It's completely wrong. You really need, you know, 
I mean, if you think about coagulation, flocculation, it's very obvious you need to do this in a slow dose and really on permanence. Yeah, 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 totally and, agree. And the best thing is also not this this uh, pump uh, who, who uh, the best is peristaltic pump because it's on permanence, it's slowly, yeah. it's not pumping. Not and a pulse. Pump, uh, not yeah, a pulse. Not a pulse. Yeah. That yeah. was what I so, was looking for, yeah. So what if you don't have CPM? Can you still use APF? Yes, you can. Okay. Maybe a quick point to the okay. dosing rate. You know, we, what is dosing rate? Uh, for us, the higher the better, <laughs> because we produce and we sell this, right? But uh, we, we always recommend as a starting point in public pools, one milliliter. And then you let it run, you know, for two, three uh, weeks. Mm -hmm. And then if everything is great, you also could measure aluminium in the water, then you can go down by 50%. So mm -hmm. your dosing rate will be roughly between 0.3 to 1 milliliter. Again, ours is, is the highest concentrated product that you find on the market. Uh, for primer pools, just go for 1 milliliter per cubic meters of turnover. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, we want at least to sell one bottle each season, right? <laughs> so Which end is of 20 liters, huh? Just 20 yep. liters, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Uh, don't forget, I, I, I think Philip already mentioned it. Think about the Estee Lauder factor from uh, last point. <laughs> our, our wives are uh, not cheap. Uh, yeah, <laughs> also yeah. most most wives. Okay. Philip, what is the other okay, possibility? Okay, so, so alternatives to CPM, right? Uh, very often, you know, a question comes up, okay, I don't have either the space for the CPM yeah. to fit it in, or, you know, I have too much pressure drop that I don't want to, to, to have in my system because it's already dimensioned at the limit. Exactly. Huh? Think about our, our, that was session number five, I think, or, yeah. or one uh, before, four. where we had a, a CPM in and we, in, in backwashing, you know, we had a pressure increase of mm -hmm. 0.4 bar and we couldn't backwash anymore the filter properly. So what is more important, the perfect mixing or to backwash the filter properly? Answer is, Backwash the filter properly. Absolutely. Huh? Uh, if you have to choose, then that's the decision. Yeah. There can also be, it could be a money issue, you know, it, it you know. There is always it's, a money it's not issue. A big, uh, not a big cost, but it is a cost. So there are moments where you cannot use the CPM or you don't have it available. Yeah. So the alternative then is to either dose it directly into the, uh, the pool pump yeah. uh, through the drain plug. Huh? Yeah, here, you yeah. Know, usually they have a drain plug. That's a good one. Yes. Or immediately before the pump. Yes. One meter or yeah. less, you know, uh, not long, five, five meters before the pump, it will start to work. But then, you know, if you already start to build up the flux, maybe you, you, you kill them in mm. the impeller. Yeah. And we do not, we are not killers, yeah. right? Yep. Um, most installation I see, you know, they dose it always after the pump. And I, I think that's really wrong. That's really wrong. In the German Dean, they say, well, with experience, you should try out, you know, which is the best point. I mean, this is, this is completely nonsense. Mm -hmm. Nobody does it. So for me, the longer the reaction time, the better. So try to make this distance, even if you say, I don't trust Dominic, I don't dose it here, I dose it here, then please dose it just after the pump. And a long way before you come to the filter, the longer the reaction time, the better. But really the best one is uh, just before the pump if you can't use CPM. Yep. Huh? yep. Clear for you guys? Good. Uh, yeah. You know, you lost your ability. You lost meter nine dolphins in this um, again you know these these animals are, are beautiful and honestly i am not allowed to say really the values but uh, the values of the water were not great you know they had problems with uh, combined chlorine uh, they had quite high turbidity they had thm it was not it was not perfect the installation you see down here and uh, these are these is how calculus filters look after 30 years. So there's 30 years in operation and they were changed from sand to AFM a year ago. And this really improved it uh, a lot, but there were some, yeah, some operation 
uh, things which were which were not good. One of them, you know, they used only one pump to backwash the filter, so we changed this to two pumps. But there were, if we are talking about coagulation, flocculation, they had three three major problems. Problem number one: this here is the line from the pump to the filter. So the pumps would be here, then comes this line, and then this goes to to the uh, filters. And this, what you see here in red, this is the dosing point of the, the flocculant. So this was a, a tube of 400 <laughs> or maybe even 500 millimeter. You know, it was not a good injection point. It just, it was injected here, you know, not going into the middle and counterflow, you know, just injected here. Of course, there is no mixing. And what does happen this then, uh, you know, the, this is the injection point, Sh shit. Uh, sorry, not shit, uh, wrong. Uh, this is the injection point here, you know, and then the flocculant just travels on the edge of, of, of the pipe. No, so, no mixing. No huh? mixing. No. What have we done? Uh, something very simple. There are, these are how uh, cold plus uh, strainers are looking after 30 years. You know, it's a heavy environment. It's, it's seawater. Uh, we just dosed it here in the strainer. And here comes the pump, just in the strainer. And this made a massive improvement, a massive improvement. Problem number two, I take the lead here because I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, they had here these kind of pumps. Okay, this was for pH and this was for chlorine, uh, very, very cheap pumps. And same they had for the flocculation. So we changed this to this. This was really the only investment we did. You know, this, they, they, they changed, that cost nothing. And here they, they changed to, I told them, go for this pump was an investment of 400 euros. And last but not least, we said, okay, don't use your flocculant because we didn't believe in it and we took our APF. And this made a massive, massive difference. And I can't tell you exactly you know, what came from here, but here you see it's you know, so the dolphins. And this was after these changes, this before you couldn't better. see the wall behind this. Hi guys. Now you can. This Look at these baby. beautiful yes. animals. What's her name? Coral. Narada. Narada, yeah. yeah. Now she was my, she is my love. Uh, <laughs> but you see really clearly through and uh, uh, before you could see the dolphins, but you couldn't see the wall. You know, it was really a massive improvement in turbidity, factor of five. Combined chlorine, massive, and THM, massive. Again, we are not allowed to tell the, the answers. But I did this uh, together with my friend here, Armando from PS Water. Great guy, I love him. Uh, she's uh, one of the trainers of the, the dolphins, and that's uh, me. So, Hallelujah, Armando, uh, by the way. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Huh? Uh, Hallelujah story. Uh, he is the inventor of the song Hallelujah. Ha where did this is came from? <laughs> you know, there, was a, there is a big pool builder in Südtirol, and uh, the managing director, he called uh, these Triton people, they are a sect. They are a sect, you know, uh, and uh, we we didn't take this negative. We took this positive and said, okay, we are the Dryden sect. And then on a, on a party, we had a couple of beers, mm -hmm. quite some. Mm -hmm. uh, Armando, he came with uh, with the song Hallelujah, and that's our slogan. That's so our slogan, exactly. All of you maybe are can join our sect. Okay, let's summarize the yeah. reasons why you should use uh, APF. Um, if it's not just for the dolphins, it's mm. also for the pools. Uh, reason What's number one. good for one, the dolphins is good for absolutely. you. Absolutely. So best filtration down to 0 0.1 micron. Chlorine demand is reduced substantially uh, to the lowest possible level. Yeah. And huh? you forgot something which okay. is not here. It looks great. Very clean water. Just absolutely. looks great. If you have cloudy water, it looks shitty, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Isn't number one. True? Clean Reason water is nice water. Reason number two, it really improves the safety from pathogens in a, in a swimming pool. Okay, explain me this. I mean, what do you mean by Okay, by so, so... What are these, these animals one of, one of the biggest concerns uh, that we have in, in pools is, uh, is crypto, cryptosporidium. Yeah, huh? and it's not a concern. It's really, this is a very big concern in the US. It's a very big concern yes. in the United Kingdom and some other countries. 
We don't talk in Switzerland about crypto. Nobody knows what crypto is, mm -hmm. but we have them as well. We just not monitor it. It's yes. with, like with the virus. If you wouldn't yeah. test it, we wouldn't have a pandemic. Um, but uh, it is everywhere. So what's what's the problem with this crypto? So crypto, how do you get it? Well, crypto is a nasty parasite. Uh, it's yeah. a parasite, a pathogen um, of fecal origin. So is it if, a virus? If uh, no, it's. Uh, it's a, a protozoan. It's a protozoan, yeah. yeah. It's an animal. Yeah. Uh, um, so where does it come from? So it it comes from people pooing in the pool. Okay. Uh, uh, people who use the pool, people who have diarrhea, for example, that's how it gets into the pool. Okay. And, and it's, how do you take it? I think it's ingested orally. You swallow the water. Okay. That's how you get it in into so, your body. And it causes severe diarrhea. It can cause uh, serious intestinal uh, diseases. It's, an, it's a nasty thing. So it's nasty and dangerous for you on one side. It's also very resistant to chlorine. It yeah. basically, it's basically resistant to chlorine. You, yeah. know? you know, crypto can survive 5 ppm of chlorine for 5,000 hours. So make the math. That that's quite that's, some days. That's quite some yeah, days. Yeah. And as Philip said, you know, uh, also there is a mortality. You know, if crypto, especially if you have a weak immune system, again, like with the virus, you know, the mortality is one of four hundred. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. it's not it's not something. No, uh, it's serious. So it's in drinking water, but it's also in pool water. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. So don't drink the water. Yeah. And uh, again. They are chlorine resistant. You cannot kill them with chlorine. Yeah. So yeah. how can you, what can you do? So, so cryptos are three to six micron in size, which means if you have very good filtration, for example, a filtration with AFMNG, it will give you a reasonable protection. However, a very if, high protection, very, very high. high protection, but not with sand. Sand filters exactly. down to 20 micron. Yep. And many of the glass media also are not. And with with a daisy, you get it down to zero point one micron. Exactly. You know, you make such a reduction. It's really you just you only can filter them out. You yep. cannot kill them with chlorine. Yep. That's the takeaway. And this is why flocculation coagulation is so important. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So reason number three, why use APF, has to do with the fact that APF also includes um, no phos which is a phosphate remover. Huh? So how much do we have? So we have uh, 1.5 liters in a, in a 20 liter canister uh, is no phos, 1.5. Okay. And this is really, you know, we, we, we came late, we, we started with half a liter, then one liter and then 1.5 liter because there, at a certain point, that's a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, no phos became so expensive. You know, the raw material jumped by a factor of 10. And uh, when we really originally started, when I started with Howard, we were on 1.5, then yeah. we moved down because of cost reasons. People were not ready to, yeah. to, to pay more than 100 euro, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for a bottle. And uh, we are back to normal. We are back yeah. to normal. Very high level of uh, no false. So, um, Philip, explain phosphates and, and no false. How, how do you remove them? Okay, so so phosphate uh, is a is a molecule with a, a three times negative charge, huh? and no phos has um, has molecules with that are positively charged, three times positively and charged. As you can see here, so huh? they this attract is... each other. Huh? Yeah. So here is a phosphate, three times yeah. negative, which here is, is in, no phos, which is in solution. Okay. Which is in solution, yeah. it's yeah. repelling each other, yeah. they do not come together. And then if you bring them together, you form uh, you, you form a molecule, a particle, and you take it out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's talk about no force. Huh? Yeah, let's talk about no force because you know uh, the the no force that we have in, in, in the product, this is usually enough, you know, to remove all the new phosphates which comes in unless it's something very yeah. special. Yeah. But maybe you already start with quite a high level of phosphates in your in your water when you open up the pool, and then it's always good to, to do it. So mm -hmm. no phos is also a product that you can use if you don't have a daisy as a standalone product. Yeah. You can use it with cartridge filters. You can you cannot use it with DE filters. It will block the DE filters, but uh, of course with sand filters, and, and it's, it's a great product. It's the biological solution against algae and bacteria. 
And yeah. I guess you will explain us this, yeah. Yeah. Dr. So, Meyer. So take how, over. <laughs> so how how does phosphate get into the pool water first? Okay, right. Yeah. I yeah. think that's uh, that's important to understand. So there's there's different sources from pool water. One of them is fertilizers being used in agriculture, but also in your garden. You know, and I think you have a story that happened to you recently. Yeah, it was huh? not recently. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know, my pool was very good, but nice treated. This was before I had uh, the DHN. I, I used to, to work with Pyrosoft, you know, with this peroxide. Everything was great. Then we went on holiday and we came back and the water was still very clear, but it was everywhere I had algae. So I asked my wife, uh, was the gardener here? Did he do anything? Yeah, he was here, but of course, uh, and uh, he used a little bit of fertilizer. And uh, then I went to him and said, tell me really, did you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, mad, but please tell me, did you, did you wash your equipment in, in the pool? He said, yes. And this is why, you know, uh, the, <laughs> the phosphate right. levels skyrocketed and this, yeah, this yeah. was a, a nutrient, a yeah. perfect nutrient, and then you had the algae. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I know it's coming from fertilizer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that it's, can be in your garden, but it also can be in the environment, you know, exactly. with the wind and so yeah, and blows it in, yeah. yeah. It can be from your tap water that you use, um, you yeah. know, from reservoirs. Yeah, especially tap water, let me add to you one thing. You know, I had one case in uh, this was in uh uh Dings Dinkelhofen thing, yeah, somewhere in Germany. Uh, we were there, they had some problems that we will discuss in another session, but they had from the incoming water, from the tap water, they had four ppm of phosphates. Now, how this, does this come? You know, if you have an old network of, of uh, drinking water, you know, you have metal, metal tubes, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they are, yeah, they can corrode. And this is why uh, some uh, water treatment works, those phosphates in the water, to, to, to protect them or to inhibit corrosion. So that can be, yeah. especially in yeah. old cities, that can uh, uh, be very often the case. So if you see, I always have problems with my algae, maybe you measure once the, the incoming water on, on phosphates. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also we have bathers that bring in uh, phosphates through skin cell bacteria. And then last but not least, you know, from the environment, birds, leaves, pollen, dirt, you know, uh, that's blown into the pool. Pollen? Huh? Is, this, is this English? Pollen? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Same in, yeah. in German. Okay. Yeah, that's where it comes uh, in. So that means also outdoor pools are more, have more problem with phosphates. Uh, I mean, if it comes from the tap water, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. But yeah. it's where you can get phosphates. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Let's talk about steaks. What? What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting hungry. It's almost not. Is it noon? No, not yet. Anyway, but um, let's talk about what phosphates do and and why they are important, right? So phosphates are responsible, or phosphates catalyze the mechanism, the mechanism that cells have to transport nutrients. Huh? Um, so if you remove phosphates then that means um, the food cannot be transported. It cannot be metabolized in simple words. Huh? And then? And then cells will starve, yeah. right? I always use the, the example, and I do not know if it's 100% uh, true, you know, like vitamin C. Uh, if you don't have any vitamin C, you know, uh, you, will not be, you will not die in, in, a, in a day or two. But if you think about, you know, the sailors 200, 300 <laughs> years ago, you know, the guys who with Columbus, you know, transferred the ocean with the May Mayfair, mm -hmm. they, they had some oranges when they left, but they were gone after a week, I guess. And then they were on the boat for 12 weeks without any vitamin C. And this is why they got scorbut or, or how you call it in English? Scorbut, scorbut I think. You know, when you lose your teeth, etc. So you get weak, you get sick, you know, you have enough food. But you don't have these vitamins and this is, is I, I always uh, explain you know phosphates is for me like the vitamin c if you remove them you know algae will not die tomorrow but over a time of 12 weeks 8 to 12 weeks you know they they will disappear they will, starve, huh? they will disappear Literally. yeah okay so there are two types of phosphates that are important to understand uh, when it comes to pools the first one is what's called orthophosphates 
These are free phosphates that are in solution. These are the phosphates that uh, algae um, absorb and, and use, as we just explained. There's also organic phosphates that are bound up in an organic pollutant like an algae or a bacteria. bacteria. So which one do you read with a, with a photometer? Yeah, with, mm -hmm. with a photometer, you, you measure the, the free phosphate, the orthophosphate. This is what you can measure. Yeah. If you take, for example, here the picture of the pool, you know, with the algae, it's very clear water, but the algae, yeah. and you would measure with the photometer uh, phosphates, it's most likely you measure zero or very low amount. Why? Because the phosphates are in the algae. Now, if you make now a, a chlorine shock treatment and you just kill the algae, you don't remove them, you know, with a vacuum cleaner and put them out and backwash them out. You just make a, a, a shock chlorination, then the very high shock chlorination, then the algae will die mm -hmm. and they will release the, the, the phosphates back to the water. So you're, you're after the chlorine shock, uh, your phosphate level will, will be very high. If you then not remove them, you're back in problem within a week, maximum two weeks, yeah. and become more and more severe on yeah. this. So I think what you have here, uh, the, this is a very good uh, example, you know, the, the iceberg, yeah. you know, the free yeah. phosphates are only the tip of the iceberg. Sometimes it's all free phosphates, but if you have algae, it, it's really the, the iceberg below the water surface, mm -hmm. the organic phosphate, which is majority. Yep. So if you have this, don't measure it and say, there is no phosphate, so, uh, I don't have to do it. Uh, it. You have it. You have it in, in the organic form in, in the algae. Yep. So it's really important to remove them. Even if you make a shock chlorination, they are gone. Remove them uh, later on. Otherwise, you're back in problem. And for me, you know, this is... You know, there are other algae sites, you know, most of them, you know, some of them, you know, disturbing the flocculation. Uh, some of them are really not good for the environment. If you want to do really the, the, the best, the preventive way, the biological way uh, to, to prevent algae, mm -hmm. remove the phosphates. Yeah. Okay. No false, the biological solution. Uh, we significantly improve uh, re or remove the phosphates from pool water. Yeah, right? we remove all. All of it. That prevents algae growth. It also acts as a coagulant, as we, uh, as we learned earlier. So it improves filtration. It improves water clarity. Huh? And lastly, uh, it's a natural product that is, like you explained, compatible with all treatment methods. Yeah. One more. Yeah. So uh, how do you dose it? You know, we have this one liter, five liter and the 20 liter. The 20 liter is obviously more a little bit for the bigger pools. So you can measure this. And if you do the, the measurement with the photometer, it takes 10 minutes. So most people do not go for this. Um, we have a, a simple test kit, which can not tell you so precisely, but you see 0 0.2, 0 0.5 or one and bigger. So which is, is good. So you can, uh, what uh, Florent called here the intensive treatment. You can use the phosphate test kit, measure it, and then dose accordingly. With 10 milliliter here, 10 milliliter of no force, you can remove one gram of phosphate. So let's say you have a pool of 100 cubic, you have one ppm uh, of phosphates, one ppm part per million, it means uh, milligrams per liter or grams per cubic. So very simple, 100 grams. You would need one liter of nofos to remove it. Huh? Most people will not do it. So I think the best is the preventive treatment, which is roughly 100 milliliter for, of nofos for a 50 cubic meter pool once a week. And the best you dose this over the skimmer or, or in the balance tank or in the overflow gutter. From you also can dose it directly in your pool, but I warn you <laughs> to do it. Uh, why? As we said, you know, it's a coagulant. And I did it, you know, and I, I did it uh, just before a, a pool party uh, of my kids. You know, I uh, dosed and I, I dosed a lot, helps a lot. I dosed one liter or, or even a little mm -hmm. bit more directly in the pool. Pool was clear. Then I started the dolphin on, on, on top. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the counter chat. 
within 10 seconds, you couldn't see 30 centimeters <laughs> deep into the water. This was the, the coagulation your, reaction. You your wife mixing. didn't think that was funny. Oh, huh? she was. Uh, she was so pissed on me. She uh, and on, as well as my kids. So don't do it. I mean, the fact is great. You know, it's really you see how it works. Mm -hmm. And but it takes 24 hours, depending on your hydraulic, until this water goes over your overflow gutter to your filter will be removed by this. A part of it will go down on your uh, floor and will form a white great powder that you can remove you know with a vacuum cleaner with a with a dolphin at least if it has a cartridge maybe not so much with a bag so uh yeah that works so but if you want to be on the safer side those that the skimmer or with a dosing pump yep. uh cpm okay. yeah good I'm, I'm too long i know step number three all right for this step let's welcome our friend Flo because he Come explained it so good here Yes. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks Hi, for inviting me on your show. <laughs> yes. Sure. My Pleasure. Microphone works. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, you so you kind of even have here the so ACO. The we love ACO. ACO is really maybe yeah probably the second best product after AFM. Uh, it's a, an amazing product. Um, ACO is a natural product you can use in all pools, basically all pool treatments, uh, but it's only for outdoor pools, not indoor pools. Uh, the product you can dose manually or you can also dose automatically. So outdoor pools, manual, automatic, very easy to use, all pool treatments, and you'll see this product has two unique features. It's a unique product. First of all, how do you... If you dose it manually, how much you dose? Or so does this come later? We recommend to dose one liter per 100 cubic uh, volume of water every week. You can also do it once a month if really once a week is too difficult or too, uh, yeah, there's not really any, too much restrictions. Yeah. And we also say, please start with an initial dose over one to four weeks with the double. Yeah. So that would be two liter on 100 or one liter on 50 cubic meters. So it's not a lot. To be honest, I prefer the manual dosing. Yeah. Why? Because you also should shake a little bit the product before you dose it. It's also standing on the instruction because there are some particles in it, you know, which go down. And if you shake them and you dose it, then it's better. So, for example, we have our five liter manual dose uh, canisters. If you have yep. a, a 50 cubic meter pool, the best is you dose the complete one. You know, if in, in if you may do the commissioning beginning of the season and after two months another yeah and then you do this twice and then uh, it's done the last four weeks of the season you don't have to do so it's better to start a little bit with a higher dose in the beginning you know to build up uh, yeah the product is natural product takes some time to really uh, to see the full effects yeah so you need to, to have a good initial dose so yeah. please overdose in the beginning and the last four weeks actually you can stop dosing if you continue the dosing, I'm not crying. That's good. Good for me. Good for you. Yeah. You <laughs> so, find all the dosing instructions in the brochure and yeah. yeah. And really the, the automatic dosing uh, once a week or on permanence. The problem is this product is quite uh, alkaline and it's very often that you block the, the injection, injection and then you're not dosing at all. And this is a disaster. Of course, think about my wife and the Estee Lauder factor. This is really not good. So I prefer really the manual uh, dosing. Yeah. I mean, the automatic dosing for public pools where you have to dose one, uh, one, one container uh, a week, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So explain us the product. Okay. Two main features. Number one, ACO will act as a stabilizer. It will protect chlorine from photoreduction. Uh, well, you all know that chlorine is very sensitive to, uh, to UV light. And what we do is the product will filter uv light a bit like a sunscreen you know so the short wave uv light here very aggressive very high energy intensity will be filtered into longer wave uv light so much less aggressive for chlorine molecules as i said this is a great product for chlorine but you can also it, use it with peroxide for example also peroxide is sensitive to uv and it's also working with uh, all all pool treatments as i said but for chlorine so chlorine you want to add something, all right? Yeah, no. Um, so we protect chlorine. We filter UV light to protect chlorine. But unlike cyanuric acid, we don't reduce chlorine efficiency. And that's the number one point. Because if you look at this cyanuric acid, if you have, for example, above 50 ppm of uh, cyanuric acid in your pool, 
your active chlorine, will, your chlorine will be efficient uh, only at one third of its uh, capacity efficiency. With, uh, with ACO, we protect the chlorine, but chlorine efficiency remains optimal, 100% efficient. No, it's not true. You're taking, we are not reducing our efficiency. We are improving the efficiency. We improve it. That's what we see before, after. But as, as Florent said, you know, Sanyar Gassic again, you know, I, I do, we do not like it. It's forbidden, by the way, in, in public pools in Switzerland, Germany, etc. because of this reason, because the disinfection power goes, goes down. You also see this in the redox uh, potential. This is why we do not like it. It's also organic and that for a food source for heterotroph bacteria. But yes, what it does, it increases the half life time of chlorine. You know, if you have the half life time of chlorine is roughly 40 minutes if, it's, if there is no stabilizer in. That means you have one ppm of free chlorine. There is absolutely zero load, but you have full sunlight. Then you lose in 40 minutes, 50%. You measure after 40 minutes, you measure 0.5. And uh, cyanuric acid is improving this by a factor, I don't know, 400% or, or 500 percent. Yeah. Ours is improving this by a factor of 300 yeah. percent. But with the advantage that we don't have this high reduction in, in, in uh, chlorine, chlorine efficiency. efficiency yeah. And this is why then you have to go I higher mean, with, with the free chlorine yeah. and you don't need this. And all of you who use cyanuric acid, you've seen you have these problems. Uh, Chlorine overdosage um, is, is one of the main ones. You have to renew the water. Water is completely saturated. So you will not have this with ACO. Yeah. So we protect, but we also increase the, the oxidation. That's the number two features. So uh, yeah, perfect product for salt water pools once again. Um, yeah, in salt water pools, maybe one thing, then you say, well, I don't need more chlorine. Yeah, but, and salt but the, is not, it, it, uh, it's not expensive and it's also not really the, the, the point, but it's the, the, the lifetime of your cell. Uh, if you have inc be increased, yeah, that will be increased and then you have to replace this more often. Yeah. Good. Uh, feature number two, uh, ACO will increase oxidation. It's a photocatalyst. So what's a catalyst? A catalyst is something that amplifies a reaction without being consumed in the process. And what we amplify here is the natural disinfection power of the sun. So naturally, UV light will create some uh, oxidation reactions. It will create free radicals. You know, that's what the sun makes. This is a very powerful, the most powerful UV unit we have on the planet. But it's quite a slow process. I mean, it's a yep. long, slow process. And what we do with SEO, we strongly increase this. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this uh, short wave UV, uh, very, uh, which, which have a very high energy intensity, uh, ACO will use this and amplify it to split water molecules, you see here, into free radicals, hydroxyl radicals. And we've mentioned these are free radicals before, they have a very high oxidation power, so even higher than chlorine, but they, are very, uh, they have a very short life. They will be consumed right away. So they oxidize all the pollutants, all the organic pollutants, organic chloramines, and they will form uh, harmless water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Because it's complete oxidation. Yeah, uh, it's complete not oxidation. Substitution. Oxidation is complete oxidation. So no, no toxic byproducts with ACO. Yeah. So that's uh, unlike chlorine, of course. So Good. what we do, we, we, uh, we use this energy, we split water molecules into free radicals, we oxidize these pollutants, and we can reduce uh, chloramine concentration by up to 50%. Thanks to the sun. The more sun you have, the cleaner the water will be. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much. He's our Mr. ACO. Uh, but he's right, you know, Welcome. because a very, Thank very you, unique uh, product. One small case study, Terra Natura, this uh, we, is in Spain. It's a big water park. To be honest, it's not with AFM. It's not the best filtration I've ever seen. Uh, but our partner, PS Pool, brought us to, to this. And what we have done in this really big water park, uh, they just dosed, uh, uh, according to our instruction, ACO. You know, and after uh, four weeks, you know, you have seen that the combined chlorine, uh, let me go to the result, you know, the combined chlorine has dropped by 50%. The turbidity went from 1.2, which is terrible, to 0.7, which is not good, but it, it, it's massive, massive, uh, uh, better than before. But really the goal was, so for me, this was the important thing, but really the goal was is to, to reduce the chlorine consumption, and they did. You know, they came from 96 IBCs, 96,000 liters of sodium hypochlorite 
to uh, 67 of IPCs. Now that's a saving of your bettering calculation. About 30 percent. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but it complete. It's it's about it's 30 tons, right? Oh yes. It's about uh, uh, 30 tons of savings. You know that this is more than one truck. It's yeah. more of one truck. You know. Chlorine that you don't have to feed, which will make uh, chlorine disinfection byproducts. You have not to produce it, to transport it. So really good product. Huh? Yeah. Um, do we still have time for the AC learning? We have two minutes left. Yeah, okay. Uh, I to just started water and air all what we explained to you again in one hour. Dr. Howard, Dr. Howard he can do it in four minutes. In four minutes. And this again, a uh, very good, very well Instead explained video. Again, thanks to Florent, you find on our YouTube channel in all the languages. And uh, on top, we have a very good daisy brochure because we end up now this last three sessions with this Daisy mm -hmm. uh, brochure yep. where I think it's really well explained uh, that you can download from us or we have it in some languages so so use this. Maybe a last one. This is Greece, ladies and gentlemen. This is from uh, my friend Andreas Petri. Need 50 meter or 100? At least 50 so. Yeah at least 50 uh, but uh, look at this you know it's it's uh, beautiful. beautiful it's unbelievable. Something for the ladies, huh? You see, we don't show always uh, ladies. We show also men, you know, sportive men, not like us. Uh, but uh, concentrate on the water. You know, this is how daisy water looks like. Uh, yeah, I think it's bing. It's really it's good. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks, uh, Andreas. And yeah. that's in Greece, you know, and that was really while the, the crisis. So you see, they can do it really okay. well. Okay, Outlook uh, session number seven. A Next week, week from same today, time. It's about oxidation. Huh? So we will we talk about different oxidants. Yeah, we will explain you free chlorine redox, yep. redox potential. We go a little bit deeper in this uh, free radicals. We will uh, demonstrate the, the DHN, but really probably the, the, the biggest part will be corrosion. And what's the problem with corrosion and what are the factors that cause corrosion? And we will end up again with a case yep. study. So join us on this. We would be very happy if you would do so.